everyone, welcome to another Codex Review. As always, my name is Jay, and today I'll be going over the Homunculus Covens Supplement for the Dark Eldar Codex. Now, if you want to go check out my Dark Eldar Codex Review, go check it out. It's also in the Codex Review section of my uh, YouTube channel. But today I'll be going over the supplement. Now, one week after the Codex came out, obviously they released a supplement uh, focusing on the Homunculi. And it's a really interesting supplement to me. It's probably the most interesting supplement that they've done so far for Games Workshop for the, the Warhammer 40k items because most of the other supplements put us a different spin on the whole army. Like, for example, the Gosgal Thraka supplement, right? You just get a different Warlord trait, a slightly different detachment. Um, it's more focused on the elites, but you can still take pretty much anything in the entire codex that you would for the normal Orc army. You just, uh, it's a different detachment rule, slightly different Warlord traits, you know, etc. But this one is focused at a specific theme, a specific subsection of the Codex. And I think it's really interesting. Now, the competitive ability of this Codex, I'm, I think it's still going to be a pretty good army uh, supplement to play. But I really loved the fast attack choices from the Dark Elder Codex. It was probably my favorite section of the entire Codex. It really shines in the fast attack choices. And you don't get any fast attack in this supplement. So... It's going to be an interesting one. That being said, the racks and the uh, grotesques, you know, they got Feel No Pain straight off the bat now, which is great. Uh, they got some access to some awesome war gear. Homunculi, great HQ still. And Uring and Rakarth, great HQ still. Uh, Raiders and Venoms can now Deep Strike, which is pretty cool. And they cost about the same as they did before. And uh, we'll, and then the engines were got a pretty nice buff, and they got changed in a lot of ways. I really like the uh, the Kronos engine as well. The Talos is good too. Both engines have their roles. So uh, so yeah, it's gonna be an interesting. It's an interesting supplement. Let's just go over that. So I'll start off with, of course, with the detachment rules because that's you know that dictates what the what you can take. So it's called the Covenite Cautery Detachment, and in it. It's an interesting detachment, as I said, you, the compulsory, so the required are 2 HQ and 2 elites. Makes sense. But you could take up to 6 HQs, up to 8 elites, and up to 4 heavy supports. So once again, as I mentioned, you don't have access to the fast attack choices. And there were no Lords of War. So, and there's no troops. So basically, the restrictions on this list are you can only choose from the following. You're in Rakarth, Homunculus. So those are your HQs. You have to at least take one homunculi. Probably three or four would be a good choice. Uh, raiders, but they must be taken as a dedicated transport. A Venom, which also must be taken as a dedicated transport. Rax, Grotesques, and then the Talos and Kronos engines. And that's all you have access to. So those are your choices. So it's pretty much, you know, you got to take some, you know, you got to take homunculi. Urian or Karth would be a great choice still into your army. But you gotta take a bunch of monkey lie, a bunch of racks and grotesques, Talos and Kronos. So it's not a, um, you don't have access to some of the things in the Codex. But the command benefits, of course, Seeker of Torment, which means you get to reroll your Warlord traits, which we'll be going over in a moment. And Freakish Spectacle, which enemy models within 12 inches of one or more models from this attachment suffer a minus one penalty to their leadership value. It's cool. It's an interesting one. Uh, if you, providing you can make to take a lot of fear tests or anything, you'll be okay. So that's cool. So it's an interesting one. It's a really, as I said, it's an interesting detachment. And uh, those people who really want to take just homunculi and grotesques and racks, they're going to love this supplement because it just focuses on that. It's a very themed supplement. So it, it's not focusing on necessarily competitive ability, but it's focusing on the theme. And I like it. So their special rules are um, they have power from pain course, same as the Dark Eldar, which those who don't remember, each turn basically ups their thing after turn two, they get six up Feel No Pain, turn three, five up Feel No Pain, uh, then they get uh, Fleet, and eventually Fearless, and R Fleet, Fear, and then Rage. They also have Diabolical Playthings, which any units from this detachment of, or formation presented in this book that can select Artifacts of Cruelty cannot select those from uh, the Codex of Dark Eldar, but instead select from the Diabolical Playthings. The points cost show. Makes sense, right? If you choose from the supplement, you can't choose from the Dark Elder uh, artifacts. Uh, they get the Warlord traits and they get combined units. Now, the some formations allow you to take combined several units, you two and several units into a single combined unit, where virtue points are awarded for those units. 
that have completely been destroyed, a combined unit awards a number of victory points equal to its constituent number of units if it's completely destroyed. So if you have combined three things into one, and then they destroy the whole thing, it counts as three for victory points. Makes sense. Cool. So let's go for the Warlord traits then, because obviously the Warlord traits are interesting. If you're going to take Urien Rakarth, or you're going to take um, Homunculi, it'd be good to know what Warlord traits are. I think actually the Warlord traits are pretty good. Uh, there's Master Artisan, uh, which all friendly Talos and Kronos models within 12 inches of the Warlord, reroll, failed, feel no pain, rolls of one. That's pretty sweet, because now you can take squads of three Talos and Kronos engines, so they're toughness seven monstrous creatures you know, running around the board. An extra roll with your feel no pain, it rerolls to ones, but that's pretty good, you know? And plus, you run them rightly, you get a four up feel no pain. So, that really helps. It'll help keep them alive. There's Master Regenesist, which means your Warlord and any grotesque models in a unit he is a part of. So if you're running Homunculi and want to attach them to grotesques, uh, have, it will not die. That's pretty cool. There's Master Symphonius. As long as your Warlord is alive, you could add or subtract one to your reserve rolls, which is pretty good if you want to deep strike those Raiders and Venoms in turn one or uh, start turn two. You can, it adds, you know, basically come in on a 2+, plus. or if you want to keep them away, you can hold them back. Good stuff. Master Epicurean. If your Warlord was slain by an attack or weapon that has either AP1, AP2, or instant death special rule during the course of the game, you score D3 victory points. That's an interesting one. Just be a kamikaze and throw your Warlord at your opponent, make sure he dies by a really strong weapon, and... You have the D3 victory points. Kind of, you know, that's an interesting one. Then there's, excuse me, Master of Apotheosis. Your Warlord and any rack models in a unit he is a part of have Feel No Pain, 4 plus special rule. Solid. Solid Feel No Pain. So 4 up. And plus with racks, remember, the thing is about this codex you got to remember is racks and grotesques have a lot better toughness than the average Dark Eldar model. So they're the ones who feel no pain is going to be especially important on because it's going to be harder to deny that feel no pain. And the finest, final one is Master Nemesine. Your Warlord has a prepared enemy special rule. Cool. So that's some good things. Um, that's some pretty good things. And I was, I'm not going to go over these specific units because I've already gone over them in depth in the previous uh, codex, but we're just going to talk about more of the things. There's going to be a bunch of formations in the next video that I will cover. So diabolical playthings. Now these are the uh, the war the equipment that you have access to for the supplement. And they're all again pretty interesting stuff. So one of them is called Syndrix Sump. And at the beginning of each of the, his turns, the controlling player nominates one of the following special rules to apply to the bearer of Syndrix Sump. Fleet, it will not die, poisoned, or rampage. Not bad. Again, most of them by that, depending on the turn, most of your guys already have that due to power of pain, but uh, for 10 points. It helps. It gives you a little bit more control over your, your guys. It can help you in certain situations. This one's, again, I don't know about this one either. The Vexator Mask. And the Vexator Mask, uh, basically, if it, when fighting a challenge, the bearer's opponent suffers minus five penalty to the, their initiative. Now, once again, I don't see this being the most useful. Seeing as Dark Eldar have such a high initiative to begin with, the odds are that they're going to be going before their opponent. But it's 10 points. Situational could be good. Orbs of Despair. Uh, when a model armed with the Orbs of Despair makes a shooting attack, the controlling player can choose to throw a grenade with a falling profile rather than using another shooting weapon. Vehicles hit by an Orb of Despair are unaffected. The Orbs of Despair can, cannot be used in close combat. It's a range 8 inches, strength 1, AP 2. Because it's strength 1, you know it's going to be poisoned. Uh, nope, not poisoned. Assault 1, blast, instant death. Blast. Really? Not poisoned? Instant death. Okay. I thought it was going to be poisoned. Because usually anything strength one would be poisoned. 25 points. If it was poisoned, it would make sense. But it doesn't appear to be poisoned in this. Maybe it's poisoned in the real book. We'll see. I'm using the, um, the iBooks. Then there's the Kadesi... Hemivores. 
A model equipped with the Kadesi Hemoors makes D6 additional attacks that are resolved at strength 3, AP dash. These attacks do not benefit from other from any of the model's special rules, such as Furious Charge, Raining, etc. These attacks are resolved during the fight sub phase at the initiative step 10 and grant the model an additional pile and move. Cool. That's great. In good situations, you know. Then there's the Panacea, Panacea Perverted. The bearer of the Panacea Perverted has the It Will Not Die special rule, but passes it on a 4+, plus, which will definitely you know, keep your HQs alive. Furthermore, attacks with a Poison special rule only inflict wounds on the bearer on a roll of 6. So if you're up against another you know, Poison Heavy Army, good stuff. And then the Nightmare Doll. The bearer of the Nightmare Doll adds 1 to any Field of Pain roll he makes. Furthermore, so if basically, if you get a... You can combine this for three up feel no pain essentially. You know, you get some some uh, engines near you to give you a four up feel no pain, and then plus one for three up feel no pain. It will definitely keep your guys alive. Furthermore, the nightmare doll automatically negates the first unsaved wound with the instant death special rule. So if you're up against gray knights, it keeps them alive with the extra one. But once you use it, it goes away. It cannot be used anymore to give the plus one to feel no pain or negate any more instant death rules. That's for 35 points. That to me is definitely an auto include in most armies. If you know you're going up against Grey Knights, bring it. Keeps your guy alive. Simple as that. Or you can let him die and then get D3 victory points if you get that one uh, Warlord trait, which would be kind of funny. So this this particular... Um, it, it's a, this detachment focuses a lot on formations. There are actually a lot of formations to it. But um, it's an interesting... It's an interesting uh, supplement. My first, my first uh, impressions are that it'll be fun. It will be competitive in some respects. You know, grotesques and racks are just as good as they ever were. Raiders and Venoms can now deep strike in turn two, which is great. And uh, Urian Rikarth got dropped in points. It's a great points cost guy now. And Amunculi are great. So it, it's it's filled with good things. It just doesn't have those fast attack choices that I really like, like scourges, scourges, or. Um, you know, the, the jet fighter or uh, the bikes, you know, the reaver jet bikes. But it does have, you know, you, the ability to take six HQs. So you take Urin or Karth and five homunculi and, you know, eight elites. So eight squads of racks or grotesques in raiders or venoms. That's going to be pretty hot and nasty. And all that feel no pain, unless your opponent has some really high stuff to deal with it, you're going to be in great shape. So I think it's a good supplement I really like about it is the flavor to it. It has, it's very distinct, you know, it's focusing on only a subset of the co of the other codex, and it, it's a very themed supplement, you know, as opposed to the other ones where it's like, oh, you get different warlord traits, but you can still take pretty much everything the same thing, you know. So, very cool stuff. So that was it, my end of part one. I will be going over the formations in the next part, and if I have time, I'll be going over the, um, the scenarios as well if I have the time otherwise it'll just be in a third video but that's it for my first impression so as I said I think it's an interesting supplement um, I think it will be competitive it just it's gonna be a very different feel than the standard dark Eldar list which is gonna be very fast and hard-hitting this is gonna be a little bit slower but you can still deep strike you know all those Raiders or the and the uh, the Venom's in and the pain engines to me the pain engines are gonna be amazing I think the engines themselves now they can take squads of three um, I think they're going to be very competitive, so I think it'll be an interesting supplement. And the Warlord traits, they're pretty solid. As far as Warlord traits go, uh, it's probably one of the best sets of Warlord traits I've seen in a while. And the tool, the extra artifacts, some of them are pretty good. Um, some of them could be quite useful, I just don't see a couple of them, you know. The minus five initiative to your opponent, you're probably winning first anyway. So, thank you very much for watching this part of my in-depth review of the new supplement for the Dark Eldar Codex. As always, my name is Jay. Please leave a comment in the comment section down below of what you thought of what I mentioned. And uh, and yeah, what do you think about the, the supplement? Do you think it's going to be good? Do you think not? Do you agree with what I said? Do you disagree with what I said? And by the way, go check out, if you really want to go see some in-depth review of each part of the Codex, go check out my homie uh, Scardcast, S-K-A-R-E-D-C-A-S-T. He's doing a very in-depth review of the Dark Elder Codex as well. So check him out. Stay tuned for more videos. Till next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting.